Every day, I wake up, hit snooze two to 20 times, and brush my teeth. Then, I do 15 things that tell you a little something about my gender. I style my hair. I do what I affectionately like to call putting on my eyebrows. I won't leave the house without that one. I apply a lavender scented deodorant that my partner is really not into. And all of these things, from the shoes I wear to whether I put on perfume or cologne, tell you that I'm a no-nonsense and very stylish woman. Like most of us, when I was born, a doctor circled one of two letters on my birth certificate. In my case, it was F for female. And throughout my life, I did not struggle with that little letter F. I have this particular anatomy, I identify as a woman, and when I'm out in the world, people treat me like I'm a woman. That's what it means to be cisgender. It means the sex I was assigned when I was born lines up with who I know myself to be. And that aligns with how I'm seen in the world. This, for the most part, is what society expects. But gender isn't always what we expect. So, real talk. I'm obsessed with all things Marvel. This is Captain America, AKA Steve Rogers, for those of you in the room in the know. What's his gender? He's a man. He's strong, he's assertive. In terms of his physical appearance, he's a big, burly dude. And he is wearing the hardest working t-shirt anyone has ever seen. Who does he like? Women. women, specifically pretty white women. And these are all things we know about him as a character. But they're also things we might assume if we were to ever bump into him in his hard working t-shirt on the street. But we might not be right. The sex we're assigned at birth our internal compass when it comes to gender, and our clothes or our presentation don't always line up in ways that society tells them to. I could just as easily stand here, look exactly like this in this shade of lipstick and be a man, or non-binary, neither male nor female. Gender isn't something you can figure out just from the cut of a fly-ass blazer or the wafting scent of Axe body spray, now available in Awkward Teenager. <laughs> but our reactions to that reality, when it doesn't line up, aren't always great. 14 years ago, I heard someone introduce themselves with neutral pronouns, they and them. I was in a gender studies class as an undergraduate student, and I didn't expect it. At first, I was surprised. And then I was confused. And then I got a little bit angry because it made me uncomfortable. And being uncomfortable makes me angry. So what did I do with this toxic soup of emotions? I didn't say this person's pronouns at all. Not once. Because for 16 weeks, that entire semester, I avoided them completely. I want you to imagine this exact same scenario, except this time, I'm not a fellow classmate. What if I'm their professor? What if I'm interviewing them for a job? What if I'm their doctor? I train organizations of every type and size on how to be more gender inclusive. I know I have come a long way in those 14 years. <laughs> and after 12 years of doing this, I can tell you a few things with total confidence. And here's one. A lot of us respond the way I did. We freeze. We freeze when we're confronted with the reality that gender exists on a spectrum beyond and outside of biologically male and female, like we've been told our entire lives. We freeze because for so many of us, this is unknown and uncharted territory. And that's okay. It's okay to freeze. But what we do after matters. Social change happens at three levels. The individual, the interpersonal, and the institutional. If we're going to be a country 
that celebrates everyone. If we're going to be a country that doesn't freeze in the face of difference, we have to make strides in each of those directions. Here's what I'm suggesting. We need to shift our expectations of gender. I encourage us to make a gender inclusive change somewhere. It can be at home, at work, or at school. Try out introducing yourself with your pronouns. Hi, I'm Kim. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. Maybe we put tampons in all public restrooms, regardless of the gendered icon on the door. Maybe go home and tell someone about my talk, and instead of referring to me with she and her pronouns, practice using they and them, gender neutral ones instead. We have to create cues for everyone around us, but often most importantly for ourselves, that gender is so much more than our cisgender experience of it. Second thing, put your gloves on, it's time to get in the ring. 78% of transgender and gender non-conforming people experience workplace discrimination. Unsurprisingly, we have zero federal protections that are explicitly for trans and gender non-conforming folks. At the start of my career, I facilitated a support group for trans women. In one of our conversations, I found out that every single person had been fired from her job when she transitioned. I encourage us to look up the Transgender Law Center or the Transgender, Gender Variant, and Intersex Justice Project. Donate money. Volunteer. Spend some real time supporting this fight. Third thing, it's time for a wake-up call. Every day, cisgender people use locker rooms, dorms, and yes, public bathrooms without comment. We get promotions and raises because people focus on our merit instead of fixating on our gender. We don't worry if doctors know how to treat us or whether a police officer is gonna harass us just because we exist. Privilege is the stuff to which we're oblivious. It's the things we don't see. So we have to start seeing them. Take note every time we see a gendered icon in a doorway. Every time we only have the option of circling M or F on a form. These are all moments our privilege is showing. And trust me when I say, there are hundreds of them. And each one is an incentive to get involved. And each one is an even bigger incentive to follow the lead and be humble and listen to transgender and gender non-conforming people of color when we get involved. Now here's the good news. And yes, I have come to you with a little bit of good news. <laughs> Change is coming. In 2017, 55 million people use the San Francisco International Airport. This year, in 2019, SFO opened the Harvey Milk Terminal. These are the brand new, multi-stall, all-gender bathrooms in that terminal. In California, Washington, and Oregon, you can amend your birth certificate to a non-binary designation. In California, Maine, and Oregon, you can pick non-binary on your driver's license. So as we all do this work, we're in it together. And whether these changes occur at the individual, interpersonal, or institutional levels, they're coming because they have to. In 2016, the Movement Advancement Project counted 1.4 million transgender adults in America. That same year, the Williams Institute at UCLA found 30% of young people in California are perceived as gender non-conforming. That means almost one out of every three young people in this state are perceived by their peers as neither male nor female. And lest we forget, indigenous people and communities of color across the world, like the Hijra in India, have been recognized as multiple sexes and multiple genders for centuries. Our narrow expectations of gender are more often than not 
a byproduct of plain and simply not knowing any better. But that same lack of understanding can cause us to respond to trans and gender nonconforming folks with panic, anxiety, and discrimination. Since January of 2019, the Human Rights Campaign has counted 20 transgender people who have been murdered. 17 have been black women. And listen, I know change is tough, and that's okay. But it's not okay to sit idly by as people are oppressed. In my experience, most people want to be inclusive because we want to live in a country where everyone thrives but that reality is up to us. In a world where each of us has a role to play in the fight for belonging, it's high time we asked ourselves, what's mine? Thank you.